In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you once again to Mass that is being celebrated here in the chapel of the Pastoral Center of the Archdiocese of Newark. I'm delighted to be able to pray with you along with the Deacon Asterio as we seek to be nourished by the Lord's Word and the celebration of this sacrament. Me da mucho gusto darles la bienvenida una vez más a esta celebración eucarística que se difunde desde el, la, la capilla del Centro Pastoral de la Arquidiócesis de Newark. Que nuestra celebración nos fortalezca como discípulos misioneros de Cristo. Let us ask God to do what only God can do. To forgive us, to heal us, and to open our hearts to the mysteries we are about to celebrate. Señor Jesús, tú que sanaste a los enfermos, Señor, ten piedad. Señor, ten piedad. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Señor Jesús, tú que te entregaste para sanarnos y fortalecernos, Señor, ten piedad. Señor, ten piedad. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into the, this world, Illumine our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any, of, any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him. For this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. El Señor es mi pastor, nadie me faltará. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. El Señor es mi pastor, nada me faltará. Por ser un Dios fiel a sus promesas, 
me guía por el sendero recto. Así, aunque camine por cañadas oscuras, nada temo, porque tú estás conmigo. Tu vara y tu callado me dan seguridad. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. El Señor es mi pastor, nada me faltará. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. El Señor es mi pastor, nada me faltará. Tu bondad y tu misericordia me acompañarán todos los días de mi vida. Y viviré en la casa del Señor por años sin término. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. El Señor es mi pastor, nada me faltará. Lectura de la Carta a los Efesios Hermanos, en otro tiempo ustedes fueron tinieblas, pero ahora, unidos al Señor, son luz. Vivan, por lo tanto, como hijos de la luz. Los frutos de la luz son la bondad, la santidad y la verdad. Busquen lo que es agradable al Señor y no tomen parte en las obras estériles de los que son tinieblas. Al contrario, recuérdenlas abiertamente, porque, si bien las cosas que ellos hacen en secreto, da vergüenza aún mencionarlas. Al ser reprobadas abiertamente, todo queda en claro porque todo lo que es iluminado por la luz se convierte en luz. Por eso se dice, despierta, tú que duermes, levántate de entre los muertos y Cristo será tu luz. Palabra de, palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, by he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi who seen this man and his parents, and that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sin. It is so that the work of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me, while it is day. Night is coming, when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he has said this, he spat on the ground, and made clay with the saliva, and smeared the clay on his eyes, and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which meant sent. So he went and washed, and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes open? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed, and I was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. 
they brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man who do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We don't know that this is our son. We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for, for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God his praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind, and now I can see. So they said to him, Why, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man, man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where is he from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does this will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this, and said to him, Surely you are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you will have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin, your sin remains. En aquel tiempo, al pasar, vio Jesús a un hombre ciego de nacimiento. Entonces escupió en la tierra, hizo barro con la saliva, se lo untó en los ojos al ciego y le dijo, Ve a lavarte a la piscina de Siloé, que significa enviado. Él fue, se lavó y volvió con vista. Y los vecinos y los que antes solían verlo pedir limosna preguntaban, ¿no es ese el que se sentaba a pedir? Unos decían, él mismo. Otros decían, no es él, pero se le parece. Él respondía, soy yo. Llevaron ante los fariseos al que había sido ciego. 
Era sábado el día que Jesús hizo barro y le abrió los ojos. También los fariseos le preguntaban cómo había adquirido la vista. Él les contestó, me puso barro en los ojos, me lavé y veo. Algunos de los fariseos comentaban, este hombre no viene de Dios porque no guarda el sábado. Otros replicaban, ¿cómo puede un pecador hacer semejantes signos? Y estaban divididos. Y volvieron a preguntarle al ciego, ¿y tú qué dices del que te ha abierto los ojos? Él contestó, que es un profeta. Le replicaron, has nacido completamente empecatado y nos vas a dar lecciones a nosotros, y lo expulsaron. Oyó Jesús que lo habían expulsado, lo encontró y le dijo, ¿crees tú en el Hijo del Hombre? Él contestó, ¿y quién es Señor para que crea en Él? Jesús le dijo, lo estás viendo, el que te está hablando, ese es. Él dijo, creo Señor, y se postró ante Él. Palabra del Señor. Gloria a ti, Señor Jesús. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, please do not blame the deacon. There is a shorter version of today's gospel, but as you probably saw, I insisted that he read in English the uncut version. Let me explain why. Since the fourth century, the story of the healing of the blind man in the gospel of John has been particularly associated with the preparation of those to be baptized at the Easter Vigil. This year, the Archdiocese of Newark has 384 people in that category, catechumens, who certainly deserve to hear this story in its entirety. I'm thinking also of the 39 people who were baptized in other Christian churches, but now wish to enter into full communion in our community, as well as the 518 baptized Catholics who are preparing to complete their sacramental initiation through the reception of the sacraments of Confirmation and Holy Eucharist. These brothers and sisters, catechumens and candidates, nearly 1,000 strong, were recognized in the cathedral on the first weekend of Lent, February 29th and March 1st. Together with their godparents, sponsors, and catechists, they deserve to hear the whole story. And you know what? So do we. Because the story may tell us more than we expect. You see, the story of the man born blind is more than a cure. You see, the miracle isn't the point. You see, if it were, Deacon Asterio could have stopped after the first seven verses. So let's see if we see. The miracle itself is told in seven verses, and you remember the punchline. So he went and washed and came back able to see. Before the punchline, we hear the first of a number of wrong-headed questions. Rabbi, who sinned that this man was born blind? His parents or himself? Instead, Jesus urgently invites them to think beyond the miracle he's about to perform. Why? Jesus tells them. And Jesus tells us why we should listen up. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus makes his disciples partners in his work. Secondly, an attempt to live in a world without Jesus is really a choice to live in terrible darkness. 
that fundamental choice and its consequences are really is what's at stake after the miracle. On the one hand, the man who was born blind comes to see more than he ever expected. On the other hand, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, who arrogantly believe that they see, instead choose an increasingly horrific blindness. The Pharisees repeatedly asked the man to recount the physical facts of his cure, thinking that he may not actually have been born from birth, blind from birth. They drag in the fellow's parents. When the fact of his cure has been established, they seize on one detail. It happened on a Sabbath. And so they reach their conclusion, or at least a lot of them do. The one who worked the cure had to be a sinner. Furthermore, they have no knowledge of his pedigree. They don't know his origins. They were disciples of Moses. They knew how God acted. Now the man who was cured was not content with the fact of his healing. More importantly, increasingly importantly for him, would be his journey of belief regarding who cured him. Do you remember how he first identified that one? He said, the man called Jesus, and no, he didn't know where he was. Pressed by the Pharisees, the man goes further, identifying him as a prophet. And finally, and only with the help of Jesus, he comes to know him as the Son of Man, the one who would definitely make God known in the human story. The man born blind finally knows where Jesus comes from. The last words he speaks tells us how far he has progressed on the journey. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Now the story may have something to say to us today. Do you remember how we began Lent? Do you remember the gospel that we read every year on the first Sunday of Lent? It recounts the temptations of Jesus. Temptations that were not only once for all answered in the desert, but temptations with which he had to deal throughout his life. And guess what? There are temptations. There are our temptations as well. The first temptation is to simply demand that God work the spectacular. Turn stones into bread. Allow me to throw myself off the top of the temple confident that someone will catch me. Isn't that a temptation for us today? Especially for those of us who are angry or distraught about the restraints and constraints that are asked of us by society at large. To say, well, we worship God and we are nourished with his body and blood, so we should be able to go and celebrate our worship as we always have. Could that be throwing oneself off the temple, asking that we be healed, that we be caught? Wherever we are on the journey of belief, if our lives are leading us to Jesus, then we are walking away from the deepest darkness. And so the real question, I think, today is not to demand something spectacular from God, but to ask very humbly, what can we do and not get within six feet of each other? Pope Francis earlier today had a good suggestion. He said we could get our Bible or go online and read all of chapter 9, which is of John's Gospel. 
which recounts the story of the man who was blind from birth. Read it. Appreciate the progress of his belief. And ask ourselves where, like that man, we find ourselves. Is it simply that man, Jesus? Or do we recognize him as a prophet, one who speaks for God? Or finally, do we recognize him as the reference point of our life? God acting in our story. The one who reveals the God whom no one can see. How can we act like Jesus? Because Jesus, when he says we must work while there is daylight, he's referring to us as well. Well, here's a simple suggestion that I offer to all of you, but especially lead to the priests and deacons. We're all feeling a little bit of pastoral cabin fever. We wonder what we can do in this moment of necessary social distancing. All of us have telephones. And all of us know people who are suffering particularly with the anxiety and abandonment. Why don't we call five or even ten of them each day? I'm going to try to do that this week. Because walking in the light, we necessarily have to reflect the light. And finally, there's the assurance of someone who had a long journey of faith, and it wasn't always a straight road. St. Augustine, who wrote a commentary on this scene of the man born blind. And he notices that it contains a commandment and a promise. Augustine said, The Lord tells us, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. In these few words, he gives a command and he makes a promise. Let us do what he commands so that we may not blush to covet what he promises. And hear him say on the day of judgment, I laid down certain conditions for obtaining my promises. Have you fulfilled them? If you say, what did you command, Lord our God? He'll tell you. I commanded you to follow me. You asked for advice on how to enter into life. What life? If not the life for about what is, which is written with you is the fountain of life. Dear brothers and sisters, in these days when we walk surrounded by uncertainty, let us claim the commandment in order to claim the promise. believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Queridos hermanos, siempre debemos elevar nuestras súplicas a Dios, nuestro Padre, pero en estos días de cuaresma es necesario dirigirle a Él nuestras oraciones con más insistencia, unidos más conscientemente a su Hijo Jesucristo. 
for the whole Christian people, that in this sacred time they may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por la tranquilidad y la paz en todo el mundo, para que nuestros días transcurran llenos de gracia y salvación, roguemos al Señor. Rogamos, Señor. That peoples in need may find help and that peace and security may be firmly established everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por todos los que padecen necesidad y sufren tentación, para que sean fortalecidos con la gracia del Señor, roguemos al Señor. Rogamos, Señor. For the sick, most especially those stricken by the flu and the coronavirus, may God relieve them of their suffering and bring healing into the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the elect and candidates seeking to join the Catholic community of faith, that trusting in the trust of in the truth of Christ, they may find freedom of mind and heart and preserve it always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por todos los candidatos que se preparan a formar parte de la comunidad de fe católica, que confiando en la verdad de Cristo puedan alcanzar la libertad de mente y corazón y conservarla para siempre, roguemos al Señor. Lord, hear our prayer. Have mercy on the prayers of your church, Lord, and turn with compassion to the hearts that bow before you that those you make sharers in the divine mystery may never be left without your assistance. Through Christ our Lord. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of faith, and has brought those born in, in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out without end and acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your, on your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, 
that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself for his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body of Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and me, your unworthy servant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until that hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Fieles a la recomendación del Salvador, y siguiendo su divina enseñanza, nos atrevemos a decir, Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre, venga a nosotros tu reino, Hágase la voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal. Líbranos de todos los males, Señor. Concédenos la paz en nuestros días, para que ayudadas por tu misericordia vivamos siempre libres del pecado y protegidos de toda perturbación. Mientras esperamos la gloriosa venida de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Tuyo es el reino, tuyo el poder y la gloria por siempre, Señor. Señor Jesucristo, que dijiste a tus apóstoles, la paz les dejo, mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe en tu iglesia. Y conforme a tu palabra, concédele la paz y la unidad, tú que vives a reinas por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. La paz de Jesús es siempre con ustedes. Sí, con tu Espíritu. 
dermos los unos a otros fraternalmente el amor. Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado en el mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado en el mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado en el mundo, danos la paz. Behold the Lamb of God. Este es el Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado del mundo. Dichosos los invitados a la cena del Señor. Señor, no soy digno de que entres en mi casa, pero una palabra tuya bastará para sanarme. O God, we enlighten everyone who comes into the world. Illumine our hearts, we pray, with the Spirit that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, during this challenging time in the life and mission of the Archdiocese of Newark, our parishes face the inability to assist those in need along with an increased risk of financial shortfalls. And so we're coordinating with the team at GoFundMe Charity to provide one online platform for the faithful to support outreach to those most in need, as well as cover the critical needs of their own and other parish communities during the Corona COVID-19 pandemic. Please consider a tax and deductible contribution to support your parish and others most in need. The faithful may also contribute through the usual ways. Please visit www.rcan.org slash parish support for more information and to contribute. You can find each parish and the parishes in need fund via the search bar at the top of the page. Thank you for your generosity and commitment. Thank you for being with us today. We're trying to keep the members of our Archdiocese informed as events develop. We will certainly publish this week the indications for the celebration of Holy Week. Muchísimas gracias a todos ustedes. Si quieren apoyar la misión de su parroquia, basta ir al site de la Arquidiócesis 
buscar el apoyo de las parroquias y a, para hacer su aporte a la misión de su parroquia. Gracias por su participación en esta celebración. Les aseguro que quedan en mi corazón mis oraciones. En esta semana vamos a informar a toda la comunidad aquí de San sobre las indicaciones para la celebración de Semana Santa. El Señor esté con ustedes. Y con tu espíritu. We pray again with Pope Francis. O oh Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who took part and who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the Roman people, salvation of the people of York, know that what we need, and we are sure that you will provide so that in Cain of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of, of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. May Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.